again, thank you everyone for being here um, to celebrate this great man. And thank you, Chris, for your prayer. I can't see these through, through these. Um, today, it's gonna be a pretty informal uh, service for dad. Um, wanted to go through the program here a little bit with you. Um, dad was born on November 2nd, 1945 in Logan. And passed away on January 11th. And can everybody hear me okay? Okay. Um, the Paul Bears today will be Chris Brunson, and Randy Max Brunson, Jonathan Brunson, Justin Griffin, Jackson Wright, Colby Brunson, Chase Brunson, and Chance Brunson. Um, the honorary Paul Bears is Gage Brunson, Scott Flukiger. Mark Flukiger, Paul Flukiger, Brian Flukiger, Max Ellett Brunson Jr., Peter Brunson, Jim Brunson, Alvin Eugene Flukiger, and H. Brent Flukiger. So we've already had the family prayer. We're going to open this meeting with the opening prayer from Jessalyn Brunson. And then we're gonna give everybody an opportunity to come up and share a memory about dad or a story. Um, we ask that when you do come and share and that you come up, um, this is a Zoom uh, meeting as well. And it, so we have a record of it later in life. Um, and the closing prayer will be by Jonathan Brunson. So I have Jessalyn, there she is. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for the opportunity to meet here today together as a family and to celebrate the life of our dear Larry, we ask thee that as we continue today, that we may continue to keep him in our thoughts and, and minds and in our actions daily. I ask thee to help us live like Larry and to love everyone and to live life to its fullest. We ask thee that we may fill of the spirit today to help comfort our heavy hearts and that we may fill Larry's love as well. Again, we are grateful for all that we have and we're grateful for everyone's safe travels here. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I just want to express my love for each and every one of you that are here, for my kids, my grandkids, and the great grandbabies. Larry loves you. He loves each one of you. He loves the babies. He loves those grandbabies and those great grandbabies. I've been trying to think of a word that would describe Larry. One of his former band members said he was always happy and that once you were a friend to Larry Brunson, Larry Brunson was always a friend to you. One word I came up with it is the word content. Larry was very content with life. It was never about how much more or how much higher. 
not about needing more or wanting more. He was content with the life and the family and each one of you. Never content at just one chocolate cookie bell. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm appreciative for my dear sister-in-law too, Kathy. She, Larry's brother passed away 11 months ago. His oldest brother, Alec. And she was the inspiration for this today. Memories and thoughts. Ellet's children and grandchildren spoke of their memories. I know you have a lot of memories. I hope you feel comfortable. Please come up and share them. And again, many, many thanks to those who've driven so far and been here. My family, I love you all so much. Grandpa loves you and he will still be around us. Thank you. Oh, I never thought I'd be in this position. Um, I spent the last, I don't know, 11 to 12 years spending a lot of time with my dad. Anyone that knew my dad, he loved the mountains. He loved to go four-wheeling. I spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my dad up in the mountains. He taught me every trail, every intersection. A lot of those roads up and up by the sinks, you know, my dad made those roads. Um, he, I mean, he could have drove those blindfolded. He would get off in the middle of nowhere and walk up into the trees and he would find section markers. I don't know, he just kept it all in his mind and he knew every gate that was locked. I mean, he just, those mountains were everything to him. And I'm grateful that I got to spend this quality time with um, him up there. And I'm grateful for my little brother, Jonathan, who was with me at the very end with my dad. My kids all stepped out of the room. My five kids, my four of my, of my five kids were able to be there. My other one was on a FaceTime and it was me and Jonathan at the very end. And my brother just sat and read him out of the Hobbit. He just read and, you know, until he, we couldn't hear any more breathing and we knew he was gone. But um, I just have one thing left to say, alpha doodle. <laughs> Larry was a lighthearted, light-footed jokester, and sometimes I was even the brunt of it. A little over 20 years ago, they came out to Christmas, sent me out to the car to get a package in the trunk. I kept shutting it, and the dang thing kept opening, and I couldn't figure it out until I looked around and seen my mother-in-law and him with the remote <laughs> every time I'd shut it. Probably a little over a dozen years ago, he came with me and Jackson to Bear Lake. He helped cook for 130 people. We did Dutch oven for a father and son outing. And he's seen a guitar sitting on the ground. And he goes, who plays that? And I says, well, it's my buddy Corey here. And he goes, well, somebody ought to play it. And Corey grabbed it. And Corey and I did some impromptu Van Halen and Bon Jovi. And I got done. And Larry's like, well, I'll be... <laughs> It was always fun to be around him and I, a couple of years ago, went quite a few times in his old Jeep up in the mountains, and it was fun to hang out with him there for the last three years. I was able to do a lot of work on Debbie and Larry's house, and him and I would, you know, just take off to get out of there and go fill the back of the Jeep full of rocks, and then come make a pile in the garage. It was fun to hang out with, and 
always had the dad jokes down to a science, no matter if they were dry or wet. He was a great guy. We're going to miss him. I just want to say how great my grandpa is. I don't remember the last time he did anything wrong. He was so funny with all his jokes and faces. He could always get a giggle out of someone. He was so kind and thoughtful, and he especially loved his rocks. I bet there's tubblewares of rocks in the garage. I loved when he would take me out on the steps of the porch and shine and polish rocks. He was definitely a special grandpa, and he knows we love him and he loves us. He seriously is the sweetest grandpa ever, and I think of him every day. He's watching us to make sure we all don't get into any trouble, and he's here for us. He always is hopeful. He always is. Hopefully, he finds some really cool rocks way up high, as he would say, Alpha Doodle. It's still I, I, I stood up first, so I get to go first. Um, just, just quickly, um, he, he was always Uncle Larry for us, and still he's Uncle Larry. Um, yes, he'll he'll be missed, but I think right now there's some pretty cool reunions going on, and and. We miss him, but he, he's in a but he's in a good place. Um, just just quickly, I, I, one good memory I have of being with Uncle Larry is he always took us hunting in the in the fall. Um, I remember packing in the front of his truck with Chris and, and Randy and Mark and me, and we were the five of us were squished in the front of that truck. Um, I remember I, I was trying to think of of good good lessons Larry taught me. And I remember driving to the top of the sinks once and, and he was, he was probably anxious to get to camp and set up camp. But when, when we got to the sinks road, he, he stopped, he took the time to unload his bikes because his boys needed to ride into camp. Um, and I just appreciated him taking the time. It would have been so much easier for him to go and just drive to camp and get his camp set up. But he, he made time for life to happen. And, and that's one of the best memories I have of spending time with Uncle Larry. Yes, uh, boy, I have so many uh, memories of Uncle Larry. But um, I, I was towards the the lower end of Chris and Randy and Mark and Paul, but I was really always jealous um, of them getting to go spend that time camping. Something that I that I uh, always that I looked forward to, and I could tell Uncle Larry knew that that was important. And later on. Um, when the boys had gotten older, I had an opportunity, and I, I, I'm glad I shared this with Uncle Larry not too long ago, but when I was 14, um, I had an opportunity to go, like Paul said, in the fall to, to go spend an entire week with Uncle Larry, and so many things that he, he taught, things that Laura was talking about, like every single road in the sinks, Uncle Larry knew. And he could tell you, you know, the new roads, the old roads, the, the names of them. Um, another thing, that, and so that, that, that was uh, something that 
kind of shaped my um, my childhood. I got to spend that time with Uncle Larry, just me and him, and I, I cherish that. Uh, another thing that I think everybody knows was Uncle Larry's passion was uh, Dutch oven cooking. He loved sharing food with with everybody, and that's uh, that's a memory that uh, that I love that I'm, I'm grateful for. And Deb, we we love you. Um, but Uncle Larry's here today, and I'm grateful for everybody that came to to support him and all the memories and the, and the stories, the things, pictures I had never seen before. It's it's neat. To... I have a ton of memories. <clears throat> um, so I, I, I'm I don't know if Marvin and Kevin got to go with Larry hunting. Did you? Yeah, but I like to think that Chris and I were the inaugural group that got to go. Chris was a, a year younger than me, and Larry said at 10 years old, you can go hunting, and I was 11, so I feel like I missed out on a, on a year. But uh, what Laura said jogs in memory, not only did he uh, know all of the roads there, but I know that uh, he and Garth and Vern and Max made their own roads to their hunting spots at, at times. So <clears throat> just a great opportunity to spend time with a, a great man. So simple memory that I have. Uh, we, I think of Chris, Randy, and Paul, and I went went up to the sinks after a Logan High football game, and we were doing our our own, uh, just doing our own hunting, and the uh, truck got a flat tire. And we didn't know what to do. There was just four of us. Later on that day, Larry came up on his Trail 90 and he looks at the truck and there's a flat tire. And he's like, I'll fix this. Don't you guys worry, I'll get this fixed. I thought, you know, how's he gonna get a flat tire fixed up here? But we went out and did our little morning hunt and then uh, came back. And I remember he had to come along around the, the tire and was squeezing the come along in. And then I think he sprayed some starter fluid in there and, and lit it and the tire blew up and he fixed the tire and we went out, went up. Yeah, we just went out with our days. So, and uh, Chris, Randy, wow, just, I lived for the summers when we could go hunting. Just great memories and uh, with your dad and with you guys. And uh, I too know that uh, he's not here with us physically, but he is, he is still here with us and so. I'll follow up with the boys. I was ladder on these guys, these three boys, and, and Larry and their boys always went camping, and I felt a little jealous. And finally, was invited to go camping with them one time. And I remember the the big thing that came out with me: Larry loved to camp more than the hunting. I think so. We'd get up there in the sinks and get uh, camp set up. And one particular time, we were there probably the first time I was out. It started getting dark and he pulled out a, a TV and a recorder and started playing Jumanji up there in the dark in the middle of the sinks. The old Jumanji, so. Uh, 
one Deborah may have heard years ago. I grew up with uh, Pete and Larry and Ellett. Uh, we went to, they come to my, our house and I went to their house quite a bit when we were in grade school. And Larry reminds me, uh, they were coming, they were up at our house one time. We were just young kids, you know, 11, 12 years old. And Larry's six years, or Deborah's six years, seven years younger than me. But Larry says, yeah, Deborah was having a bath in the sink. Grandma was bathing her. And he says, that was the first time I ever saw her naked. <laughs> so the last little while I've had the privilege of having... Larry, come along with me every second or third week when I do Meals on Wheels. And I thoroughly enjoyed his company out there. And as we get driving down the road, you know, first thing he says, there's Mount Magog and Gog up there. And we get going a little bit further down towards the end. He turns, he says, yeah, there's Gunsight out there. And the, so he knew these mountains and he was... It was always every week that we were out, he was reminding me. And then we'd pull up somewhere along the way and he'd look down at the, the driveway and he says, oh, look at all those rocks down there. Oh, I'd like to get some of those rocks down there. He was a rock collector. So, and then he always offered me and says, we, we need to get out in the four wheelers and head on up in the mountains. But we never, never was able to do that. So I, I felt a privilege to have him be, be part of him, so thank you. Um, I just want to share some memories of Grandpa, like when he take us to the doorstep outside and, and polish rocks with us, and when he'd say Alpha Doodle when we um, left his house, and I remember watching movies with him, and that's all. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard to get through this, um, but... I didn't grow up in an outdoor family. My family had never been camping. We were more travelers. My mom used to work for an airline, so we'd just fly for vacations. And of course, the Brunson family is outdoors. <laughs> so I was welcomed with open arms on many outdoor trips. And a few of the ones I remember most was one time we went four wheeling up to Mount Logan. And when we got to the top, there were thousands of ladybugs flying all around us. I mean, I've never seen so many ladybugs in my life. And it was just a really, really cool experience. Um, and another time, I had never shot a gun before either. And uh, we went out to Kelton to shoot and hunt jackrabbits. <laughs> and uh, Larry let me use his old, I think it's a 22 single shot pistol or shotgun I don't know what it is but um that was a really cool thing he helped show me how to shoot it and um yeah he I could always count on Larry to put a smile on my face even if I was in a bad mood um I got to spend a lot of time up at up at Debbie and Larry's and I grew really close to them both and I just I appreciate them very much and I will miss Larry a lot and I just appreciate his, his example. He was always so great with my kids. Always was willing to get down and play with them on the floor and teach them about rocks and trails. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, one, of my, <laughs> one of my favorite things that Larry would always say is I'd ask him if he was hungry and he'd say, no thanks, I just ate a bar of soap. It was a bubbly experience. <laughs> Every time, it never failed every time I asked him if he was hungry. So that was always a good thing to put a smile on my face. And I always loved his Donald Duck impression too. <laughs> he was really good at that. And he could blow 
into his hands and have it sound like a train. He loved trains. So anyways, um, yeah, just grateful for the opportunity to get to know him and have him a part of my life and we'll miss him. Alpha doodle for now. So my grandpa always taught me about rocks. He always taught me about polishing rocks and then he always told me what rocks, what time, kind of rocks they were. And then he always would play with me and with my sisters and that's all. And after, and after the reunion. <laughs> Seems like there's a, a lot of stories about Larry and Hunt. And I think that's one of my favorite things I remember about him going hunting. And Mark, don't feel bad. I missed out on two years of hunting before, you know, 10 years to 12. If I recall, it was, I was 12 years old and we went back up to the sinks and we'd made camp up there. And I don't remember where it was at, but uh, Larry had it mapped out really good. And we went down into the, the dark forest where they, you couldn't see the light anywhere. So it was just trees and trees. There was no sunlight. And he says, now make sure whatever you do, you keep somebody on one side of you so you know where you're going. And lo and behold, you know, he tells you the story that you'll freeze up in there if it gets cold and you're there the night. And so we go down in there and all of a sudden I turned and there was nobody there and I was all alone. And I took off on a dead run and I ran and ran, I don't know how long, and I thought, stop. And I stopped and I thought, and I go, okay, try to find a distance. I ended up one and a half mountains away from where we started in somebody else's camp about 9.30 that night. And I tried to explain to them, they says, we know where that's at. And they kind of laughed, how did you get over here? I says, well, I just kept traveling until I found somebody. They go, we'll, we'll take you back to where you need to go. Loaded me in a Jeep and took me back up to camp. And those guys were all standing there with their coats on, and they were getting ready to form a hunting party to come find me. And this was about 1030 that night. But, you know, Larry was good about teaching. He had a lot of patience and was a very good example over the years. I don't know if the older kids remember me tending them when they were over on 500 East. But Chris and Laura, you know, that was the fun time. And I remember tilling that garden out back there with your dad. And it had to be just so, it had to be just so, make those rows and the, and the, the ditches to water. And it was a lot of fun and a lot of good memories that I have. And I sure enjoyed your dad's love and his concern and his teaching that he gave me over the years. That's all I have. Thank you. He will truly be missed. While I never had the opportunity to meet Larry uh, during his life, um, I've had the honor and privilege of befriending uh, his little brother, Jimmy, over the last uh, several years. And uh, I've asked permission to share a couple of thoughts for, for Jim on his behalf. So first of all, one of Jim's favorite memories of his brother, Larry, is of Larry playing the guitar for everybody in the backyard. And um, I think he remembers that from a young age, from what I can tell. And I know it had a, a I can tell it had an impact on Jim's love for music. Um, those who know Jim, it's been a, a big part of his life um, as long as he can remember. So um, definitely impacted the direction that he that he lived his life and the things that he enjoyed and, and still enjoys. Um, also, uh, just a thought, um, while I don't know Larry, I know that every time I mention his name, uh, it brings a big smile to Jim's face. Uh, so he must have been an exceptionally kind um, and loving person and I hope that someday um, people mention my name and uh, people will smile. So, thank you. When I think of words that I can use to define my dad, three specifically come to mind. And I wanna share some examples of each one, <clears throat> but, uh, if I could describe Larry, it'd be wisdom, patience, and um, resourcefulness. Um, three of my favorite things he taught me in wisdom is um, 
he taught me how to shoot a rifle and pistols. And um, he told me, you never point anything you're not going to shoot at. And I've always remembered that. And I think it's sound advice. And he always taught me that if you have a coat, you can put it on. So if you ever get caught somewhere where it's cold and you don't have a coat, you're screwed. Um, and um, always many times around the campfire, keep the fire in the fire. You know, as kids, you love to get sticks and pull them out and wave those things around. And, you know, the second that stick came out of the fire, keep the fire in the fire. And um, uh, just to show an example of how patient my dad was, um, when we moved to our house in River Heights, my dad was working on my mom's Buick Park Avenue. He had the cylinder heads off, and I don't know exactly what he was doing, um, but it sat in the garage for a while. And there was a, a heavy coating of dust on the windshield. And uh, my friend Jameson was up with me, and my dad had left to go get some parts or something. And um, while he was gone, I decided I was going to be helpful and wash the windshield to the Buick with the hose in the garage. And um, upon washing the windshield, my dad came back, and he said, he said the floor's all wet. I was like, yeah, I, I washed the windshield of Buick for you. And I remember him quietly just leaving the garage and going into the living room or into the bedroom. And the next thing my friend and I hear are some muffled screams into a pillow. I had no idea at the time, you know, what he was working on or how detrimental it could have been if I had gotten water into places that shouldn't have been. But he had the patience to, to leave the room and he, he never really ever got angry. I never remember him getting angry, but... I remember James and I walking into that pillow later and it was still pretty warm from his obvious frustration. But uh, when, when I think of resourcefulness and just all the things he made the best of what he had, he never, as my mom mentioned, he was never ever seeking to have more than what he had. He just made the best of what he had. And that was a great example to me. And um, I agree with Brian. I'm also envious of the times that my older brothers and my cousins got to spend up in the mountains with my dad. The, the number of times and years far outnumbered where I was able to achieve, but the days that you spend with him were among my favorite memories. And um, I had the opportunity to be able to take care of him almost 24 seven in the last month. And it was awesome. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, there were some nights, sometimes he'd be up midnight, 1.30, up and down, back and forth. And one of my favorite memories of late is my mom would be sound asleep on the bed, finally be able to get some rest. And I'd be trying to whisper to my dad and, and suggest to come into the living room with me so he could sleep. And I would, I'd whisper something and then very quietly he'd go, what? As he's trying to understand what I was saying, but I'll, I'll never forget the way he said what. It's, it's an awesome memory. I'm glad to have had it. And he was a great dad, and hopefully one day I can be as great of a dad as he is. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite memory of Grandpa Larry, a uh, ton of them camping and riding around, but I think my favorite is going and sitting with him on the back deck at grandma's. <laughs> I don't know how, but he had like superhuman eyesight. He could see across the valley and tell you there's a car up on that mountain and, uh, and tell you there's 80 deer over there. Don't you see them? And that's miles away, grandpa. <laughs> I can't. But uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone here. And uh, I don't know what I would do without you guys. So thank you guys and love you, Grandpa and Grandma. Well, I don't usually do this. And I'm super nervous, but I just had this feeling and I had to, just had to get up here and say this, but Uncle Larry truly did love all of his nieces and nephews and grandkids and great grandkids and kids. He really was the best. And um, when I was 16, I rolled in a Jeep and 
he made it a point to come up there. He wanted to make me feel better. And he came up there and made peach cobbler just especially for me. And it really did cheer me up. But I wanted to say that during Christmas, I was watching some of our family videos. <laughs> Mm. One of the things that I remember a lot about there was that he would come and visit us on Christmas Eve as Santa Claus. And my grandkids, or we'll make my kids, my, um, my brothers, my sister, um, all of us were able to sit on Grandpa Larry's or Uncle Larry as Santa as his, on his lap. Well, I ran across a video of my mom and him, and he had my mom sit on his lap. So it was kind of a special memory of, of the two of them. And when we went and visited them, when visited Larry, and your family two weeks ago, and I showed a video of my mom laughing. And Larry did say, and Julie, um, which was kind of special because I know they had a, a special bond. And I do know that my mom greeted him with open arms. I love you, Uncle Larry. So my uncles, and I say uncles because it always seemed to be Ella and Larry, Jim and Pete, they were kind of like dads to us when we were growing up. Um, they always took care of us and, and, you know, when they're all together and their sisters, the jokes never stop. <laughs> and so when they say that Larry was a jokester, he certainly was. And I think that he got that from grandpa. Um, I can think of so many times in the mansion, my grandparents had this turntable and this was a large turntable. And us kids used to love to sit on the turntable and spin and spin each other off. And, and it certainly wasn't grandma's favorite thing for us to do, but my uncles were right there with us, making sure that we were all having a great time. And Uncle Larry was one of them. In fact, you know, grandma would always say, Max, and she would also say Larry and whatever, you know, whatever uncle was egging us on, she made sure to uh, let them know that she wasn't appreciative, but they were doing it in fun. Um, when Troy and I got married, my uncle Larry talked to me and he told me that he wanted to do something special for me and that he wanted to show me how much I love, how much he loved me. And so he asked me if he could cook Dutch oven for my wedding. And I, of course I said, yes, I was, I was thrilled that he would be willing to um, cook Dutch oven dinner for me. And he did, he and Debbie both did a wonderful job with the dinner. I, I can't say enough that, you know, the Brunson family growing up with my uncles and aunts, my cousins are some of my best friends. Uh, we spent so much time together when we were little. There's not a lot of memories when I was little that I don't have my uncle, my uncles and aunts in or my cousins. And I am so thankful that uh, my Aunt Debbie, my cousin Lara, invited us to go and say goodbye to Uncle Larry and give him a last hug 
and a love. And I'm so thankful that my cousins were there when we were able to talk to him. Um, and they opened up their their homes and their hearts for us to be able to spend those those precious moments with them. Uncle Larry, I love you and I will miss you with all my heart. I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, it's been a really uh, difficult past couple of weeks. Um, I don't think there's much I can say that hasn't already been said about my grandfather. Um, he was a very stand-up individual, um, always quick with the jokes. He had just an amazing repertoire of stuff he could throw out. It was just absolutely mind boggling. It was just crazy. The man really should have been a stand-up comic of some sort. Um, there are not a lot of memories that I can really pick out that stand out more than others. They were all very special and I hold them dear. But one of my earliest memories um, in my childhood was um, my grandpa taking me fishing. And I remember, We'd gotten the fish out and I was like maybe six or seven at the time. And um, I just asked him why we were fishing, um, like what the point of it was, I guess, just being curious as a child. And uh, he just gave me this amazing breakdown about the circle of life and um, why like hunting is what it is and why we do the things that we do. And probably a little bit more complex than a seven-year-old seven year could comprehend, but um, you know, I, I, I definitely hold that dear to me. And that's one of my earliest memories. Um, so many times going up to grandma's and he'd always be sitting in the chair, like Chase said, out on the deck. Um, just always with binoculars, he could pick out things. It was just absolutely amazing. The man had an eye of an eagle. And uh, I envy a lot of the things that he did. I really strive to be the type of man that he was. He um, loved his family and um, was always willing to help. I don't, I can't recall a single time I ever heard my grandfather complain or be negative of any sort. He was always looking at the brighter side of the hills. And, you know, I can only hope that, you know, all of us can be as great of a stand up person as my grandfather was. And, you know, yeah, I just really appreciate everybody being here. And thank you, Alpha Doodle. So I had uh, always heard of this 10-year rule grandpa had. You had to be 10 years old to go hunting. Thankfully, my dad snuck me out when I was like six, <laughs> which I will appreciate forever. It's really stuck with me. Um, but I remember grandpa had a bag of M&Ms that I was always eating off of when he wasn't looking, he was looking for deer. And when the bag was about half gone, he realized he had a problem. And uh, he, he convinced me that the blue ones were made out of deer poop. And then he showed me some deer poop and I believed it probably for years. <laughs> so he always had a handful of blue M&Ms, but I'll always appreciate everything that he taught me out there. Uh, one day, he was teaching me how to drive a stick in his Jeep. We were up in the hills. I, I don't remember where, but I remember coming up to a big pile of boulders in the middle of the road. And I was terrified, scared out of my mind, like no way. And I remember looking at him with that no way look on my face, like, should we turn around? And he just grinned and said, we'll go. And so we went, but he, he taught me a lot about the outdoors and I will cherish that for the rest of my life and every time I'm out there I'm, I've always felt like I was with him even though he wasn't there and I'll take that with me and, until the day I'm dead so love you guys and love you grandpa
right. Since the rest of the cousins are going up, I did write something and it doesn't say it's anxiety. <laughs> but my grandpa Larry, what a guy. <laughs> that man had a joke like ready right before you can even say something on the tip of his tongue. The last few months I got a go up there and help my grandma clean with some stuff. Not that I actually did clean. She would want me to sit down and take a rest. So I was working so hard. But I got to talk to grandpa and still just, he was always cracking a joke. He would be, like one of the days he was like messing with his shoe and I was just cracking a joke back at him. Like he got a snake in there and he just laughed it off. He's just like, had him for dinner. And I was so always so surprised with the tip of his humor, how he could say something so quick. And you really can hear the rest of his humor in their family. Even last night, talking to all the cousins. We definitely. <laughs> definitely have been using humor <laughs> to get through it. It's like a very healthy coping. <laughs> but. Definitely can't help but crack jokes in my life because of him. And yeah, rocks. That man loved his rocks. He definitely did have some x ray vision that we didn't know about. I definitely see something. I'm like, I don't even know where you're seeing that, dude. But I think I'll forever see him in the rocks that lay in the riverbeds, the mountains, anywhere. <laughs> He's rubbed off on me in that way that I can't help but slip some in my pocket. <sighs> Alpha doodles, Grandpa. Save me some rocks up there. I'll save some for you down here. <sighs> I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you all. Um, first of all, Michelle, I didn't know that was Uncle Larry dressed as Santa Claus, so thanks for that. <laughs> um, two words have come to my mind as I'm thinking about uh, Uncle Larry. Um, first one is grateful. Um, super grateful for this family. You know, when you move away and you come back to the valley, you just, you just have so many memories growing up here as a kid and family. And, and I'm just grateful for our parents um, that brought us all together uh, and gave us the opportunity to get to know our cousins and, and our aunts and uncles. And I'm very grateful for that. The second word that comes to mind when I think of Larry is, uh, especially after today, is legacy. Um, what a beautiful legacy is he's left with his family and with all of us. I think about all the memories up hunting with him and all those roads. Laura, you talked about, he had a name for every one of them because he made those roads. He even made some with me that um, I don't think we're supposed to be there. Um, and Mark, I forgot about the tire and the uh, lighter fluid to fix a flat tire. We got a flat tire, man, there is nothing cooler than an uncle that can show you how to use fire to blow up a tire. It was, it was pretty awesome. Um, but Larry taught me uh, a lot about the mountains. Um, he taught me a lot about hunting. He taught me how to clean my first deer. Um, I thought I was prepared for that, but um, I wasn't. Uh, Uncle Larry pointed out um, how to do that properly, even after I made him a couple of mistakes that um, I won't share right now with you, but um, there's more to that story. Uh, he taught me how to butcher a deer. He used to come over to my house and, um, and what was really neat about that experience is he, he would teach me and he'd give me a knife and, and make me wear that metal glove so I didn't cut myself and he'd walk through every single cut and he had names for all of them and he'd tell me exactly where it was and he'd teach me how to wrap it and I still do that to this day and I still use his uh, deer jerky recipe uh, to this day that he kept pretty close. You had to be pretty, you had to be in the family to get that recipe. Um, and he also taught me that it was possible to shoot a grouse with a 30 out six and still have something left over to cook. I still haven't been able to do that one, but um, pretty amazing guy. Uh, he taught us all a lot and I'm uh, very grateful for 
everything that he's taught me in my life and, and, and all the memories that we have of Uncle Larry will miss him. So it's kind of unusual for me to be up here because I didn't know Larry very well. In fact, I don't, I didn't really know Larry, but that was my dad who just spoke before me. Um, and as I sat there listening to all of your stories, it was so profound to me um, how each and every one of you seemed to have a characteristic that he shared. I sit there and I listen to you all and all of your stories. And while I didn't know him, I could just like feel that presence for each of you. And that doesn't happen very often. Um, so I just felt like I needed to come up here and just um, let you know that I can tell you all have uh, shared those qualities. and He's passed those down to each of you. Um, I feel that through my dad. But that's an extremely humble person. Um, and he has some wonderful traits that I can tell came from Larry. So thank you. And thank you for sharing those traits with me. So. regret it if I don't come up and say something, so I'm going to say something, even though I'm probably going to really struggle to get through it. <laughs> um, <laughs> my grandpa was an extremely patient man, and uh, I don't say that lightly. <laughs> um, Unlike my brother, Colby, I, I didn't have the opportunity to learn how to drive the Jeep in the mountains. Um, I learned on the way home from church one day. And I don't know if you guys have ever driven from their church back up to their house in River Heights, but it's mostly hills and stop signs. Um, and it was a struggle. Um, and I just remember shaking. I was so nervous. Um, and I kind of got the hang of it until we got to the stop site and I'd, <laughs> I'd get it to go a little bit and then we'd stall. And then I get to go a little bit and then we'd stall. And I'm, it was, it was a very rough 10 minutes. And he just sat there. He just sat there and was like, try again, try again. And, uh, he just taught me how to persevere, even though it was scary. <laughs> My grandpa was an extremely forgiving person and a very generous person with his love and his tender heart. And I just want to say how grateful I am to come from something like that because it's, it's so special to see how many people loved him and how much we all love each other because of how easy he made it seem. <laughs> the whole family. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really grateful to be, to be a Brunson and to have the opportunity to even have known him for a minute. Um, but one of my favorite memories of him was, uh, we were, all the cousins were all pretty little and, we would have these campouts in the backyard for 4th of July and we'd have all these tents set up. So we'd all be back there and aunts and uncles and everybody and all the kids were just wreaking havoc. It was great for us, but it was probably pretty stressful for you guys. Um, but there would always be a big old breakfast. You'd wake up to the smell of bacon cooking on the grill and sausage and eggs. And, uh, I don't know how he did it, but he always made the best hash browns. 
I still can't make them that way to this day. But uh, you always knew it was time to eat when he'd tell you to grab a root and growl. And I just, I'm gonna miss how lighthearted he was. But again, I'm grateful for the opportunity. And thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you for the opportunity to say something. <laughs> I'm Larry's older brother. Do you know where Grab a Root and Growl came from? We had a little beagle dog about this tall, and he would chase squirrels. And the squirrels would go under the tree. He would grab the root, growl, and pull it out. It's wonderful to go down this lane, listen to you guys tell these stories. You know, Larry was a really good horseman. He, we all had horses, and Larry was really good with them. We had our littlest horse was ready to be trained, hasn't been ridden yet. So dad would go over and put blankets and things on her so she'd be ready. Larry decided she was ready to be ridden. And so he put a saddle on her and he jumped on. And then he kicked her in the flanks and he was gone. We watched him go around the end of the mountain. And a few minutes later, we watched him walk back around the end of the mountain. <laughs> and we looked up on top of the mountain and there was Phenomenon. We had such fun. We lived in a different time. We could shoot squirrels out the window. Fire for us was taking a five gallon can, spreading it on the patio and lighting it up. When we wanted to clear the edge of the river, we took pint jars, fill them full of gas, sealed them up and threw them down into the riverbank. 30 feet flames was what we did. That's how you clean the riverbank. It was a wonderful time to grow up. We had 48 acres. Uh, you, you could go across the bridge in the morning. We're in the county. No one was watching you. You could do whatever you wanted. We all had automatic shotguns. We hunted magpies. Oh, it was great fun. I'm sorry you guys don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> Larry was amazing. His memory was absolutely amazing because he did actually remember every place he went. So when you went and Dodge, his old Dodge truck, I don't know if you guys remember the old Dodge truck had to pause a traction rear end. So you always got stuck. But that was how we did hunting. We went up and got stuck. And then we'd go somewhere else and get stuck. But we got deer. So it was a great time to grow up with Larry. And it was fun to watch. I always knew he could never catch me because when we were young, we, we raced each other. So I could beat him. So I didn't have to worry about him when he got mad at me. He couldn't quite catch me. Thanks. I'm sorry, I'm horrible at talking in public, but I would feel very remiss if I didn't. Give my thanks to this family. I remember the first time Randy brought me home and I hadn't been with their family for probably over 25 years. And he looked at me and he goes, Lisa Pond. <laughs> and he just said it over and over. And he's like, I do remember you. <laughs> and um, he just, I was automatically welcomed into the family. Just instant love. He's always treated me like a daughter from day one. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for his example to his children and the values that he instilled in them and the love of family. And I'm grateful to be part of this great big family. I grew up in a tiny little family. And so this has been very special for me and, and his unconditional love for everybody, no matter what you do, he still loves you. And He's a great example, and I just hope I can live up to that. And I'm grateful for the time that I had him in my life. Thank
Grandpa would have laughed through the whole prayer, listening to all the kids babble. His favorite thing was to rile them up till they were running around like Tasmanian devils, <laughs> just so we could listen to him play. I never got to go camping with Grandpa, but anytime we could convince Grandma that we wouldn't kill the lawn, he'd set a tent up for me, and we'd play back there. And he tried to teach me patience. We would sit out in the yard and sit there with bird feed in our hand, and there was one year we had a little yellow finch. It would come and eat out of our hands, and he had me name it, and we named it Holby, because it would let us hold it. And Chase saying that he could see him up on the mountain. Grandpa would get the binoculars out for him, and I still couldn't see the deer on a mountain. He'd aim it right at him. I still couldn't find him. He could see him just standing on the porch. I don't think Grandpa could hold a grudge if you paid him. Grandpa was the most loving and patient man I think I've ever met, probably will ever meet. I know that we all aspire to be like him, and I, I think that that's important. And, and yeah, his, his legacy that he's left behind, all of us, everyone here, every single person, all has good memories. I don't think any of us can remember a single bad thing about him. And it's always going to be that way. And yeah. My granddaughter, Michaela, was the first of the great grandkids. And when I asked my dad if he was excited to be a great grandpa, he said, I've always been a great grandpa. <laughs> dad, I love you so much. I will never pass a Snickers bar or an original chapstick <laughs> black label or a cup of noodles not think of him. The first time he took me fishing, he took me to his spot. And I kept saying, we need to go over there. And, oh, you won't catch me. I caught an 18 and a half inch German brown and he was so proud. We had that thing wrapped in tin foil in the freezer forever. My dad was also special in my kids' lives. He would step in on daddy daughter occasions and was always there for them. I love my dad, he's my favorite person ever. I'm going to miss him. Is there anybody else that would like the opportunity to come up and talk before we come to the end? Terry Max, he's on his way. As I visit with many of you, I find out that the name Max is pretty common in the family. I wouldn't have known about this if Rollo, our oldest first cousin, hadn't called me. So shame on you. The Brunsons decided not to have a family reunion years and years ago. 
because the first cousins was getting old enough, it was really a chore for them to do that. So we've kind of lost touch and we re need to reconnect somehow. For those that don't know me, which is probably many of you, I am Terry Max Brunson. My father moved to Idaho in 1938. And so he lost a contact with a lot of people. Our family reunions oftentimes is in Fillmore, Utah. The last time we was down there, Uncle Max, my father, Larry and I went up to the old Brunson farm to re renew some old stories. And the story was that Grandpa always had a tractor seat sitting in the top of a tree. He had trouble getting around with his walking. So the kids would park him in the top of this tractor seat in the top of the tree, and then they would go out and move around and move the deer up through this gully, and Grandpa always got his deer. So the Brunsons are not new to Dutch ovens. Larry was a master. The Brunson family has done a lot of Dutch oven cooking, okay? But Larry and I got out and we was combing the hillside, trying to find <laughs> this tree with the tractor seat. That tractor seat had to be 90 years old. And I don't know why we thought we could find it, but we had combed this hillside and I was getting exhausted. Larry was a hiker, but if I can't get there on a horse, I don't need to be there. I, I was tired. And I just stopped. And I said, Grandpa, I'm here. And when I looked up, Larry was looking at me and I said, what? And he said, is that it? And I was standing under that tree. <laughs> I would just hope, I just wanted to introduce myself to all of you because I would like to reconnect. I was amazed at the number of you who recognized me because it's been 30 years or better. And my response to that is, well, us Nephites are kind of like that. You know, we don't change a whole lot. There's only four of us left, right? But please, you know, you all know Brunson, right? Take the N off of Brunson, you end up with Brunso. Terry Max, Brunso TM at Gmail. Please connect and let's talk. Thank you. Well, I really love Grandpa, and the first time I saw him, he was like, I loved him, <laughs> and then a long time ago, Didi and Grandpa came to my house. And I took a little trip with them, to, and I go to Dee's house, and, well, I love Grandpa so much. And I love you, everybody. <laughs> Uh, 
I'd like to say, Larry, we love you. For being a wonderful father and dad to my young sister, Deborah Flukiger Brunson. I'm the oldest Flukiger boy in the family. He was trusted, honored, took care of his family, loved his family, showed him all the love that he could offer. So we love him as a, as a son. Our father in heaven loves him as his son. He will always be blessed and we will always keep him in our mind and love him as a, as a brother for our father in heaven. I testify the truth of this, that Larry was a wonderful father and dad to all his children, protecting my young sister. I, I know that you all love him too. And I do testify this of Larry being a wonderful father and dad. We'll always have you in my mind, Larry. You're a wonderful brother and dad. I do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just wanted to make sure everybody that wanted the opportunity, I, I, there's pauses. And so if anybody else, you're welcome to come share a memory. And why I'm up here, I just wanted to share a couple of things. I tried to think of a story that would include my whole family um, with my brothers and my sisters. And I remembered one. And I do remember the old black Dodge. Um, the last time I remember being in that truck, uh, I think Chris and I were in the back and we went down this crazy road and we got down to the bottom of it. You can't go down this road anymore. Um, we got down to the bottom of it and he wanted to show me something. And so to be able to mention everybody in my family, uh, it said Larry plus Debbie on the tree. And then it said equals Chris, Randy, Lara. And then there was a question mark. And that's when I found out that Jonathan or Danielle was on her way. Um, later on, dad went up and, and added those two names onto the tree. I don't know if that tree's still up, but it's a memory, a good memory I have. Another one that there's been a lot of hunting stories. Um, but my dad's integrity and the way he wanted to protect us and his patients, uh, Chris and I have been out hauling hay. I was very young, was only 12 years old. And dad took us out to a farm owned by Charlie Shelton. Um, that's where I learned how to really work. Uh, on the way back, I don't know. We stopped at this little gas station out in Hiram and we needed to I don't remember what we were there to buy, but there was a man inside of there that was having an argument uh, with the owner. I could, me and Chris could hear him yelling um, and it kind of scared us. We stayed off in the distance. The man was not using very good language. Um, my dad stood between that man and the man, the owner. And he said to the man, there's youngins in here. I don't appreciate that kind of language. And if you continue to use it, I'm going to help this man throw you out of here. This guy towered over my dad. Um, my dad held his ground. And then he looked over at me, me and Chris and he looked back at my dad. He could tell my dad was serious. And the man looked over at Chris and I and said, sorry, boys. And then he continued on to explain a few things and he left. Um, my dad always tried to protect the kids <laughs> and the amount of love he showed for his grandkids and for his great grandkids, um, was phenomenal. He never disrespected my mom. He never really ever used a lot of bad language or anything. He was a great, great example. Um, I do want to thank everybody for being here. 
if there's nobody else that would like to come up, um, we can close the meeting. It looks like everybody's been able to say what they want to say. Um, we'll have just uh, just Jonathan. I don't have my reading glasses on. Um, we'll be offering the closing prayer. If you'd like to come up at this time, um, you can close. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful to have gathered here in observance and memory of Larry Allen Brunson's life. We're grateful, Father, to have him as an example in our lives and to be able to grow up in his presence, to be able to be learned, to be able to be taught and learn things from him. We're thankful for his excellent example and what being a father and a husband is. We ask you to please bless us that we might be able to honor him keep him in our, in our hearts and do things that would be pleasing unto him. We ask you to please help us remember to show love, love to all. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.